Well, um, it is Saturday morning, and I have promised you that I will bring Larry Goldberg on every Saturday morning to take a look at the last week, what's going on, maybe take a forward look to see what's coming up. And also, Larry sometimes has a brilliant idea, and today is one of those days. So we're going to, Larry, glad to have you back. Thank you, Andy. Glad to be here. All right. So we'll leave the brilliant idea for a few minutes. Right now, let me finish up by saying if you like having Larry on, you know you need to hit that like button right now. Don't forget, do it now because that tells me to keep doing it. And then uh, subscribe and notify. We're going to have Brian White back tomorrow and we're going to take a deeper look at that Model 3 issue, the new Model 3. And also, I want to find out more about what really is a sedan and what are the TAMs on sedan, sedans. So, um, and then Patreon, that's always good. And then follow Larry over on Twitter. We'll leave with that is follow him at uh, Tesla Larry. Yep. At Tesla Larry, do it for sure. Okay, Larry, um, we have had uh, a week where everybody has been focused on the big number that came out today, the PCE. Um, the I can never remember what it stands for, Purchasers Consumption uh, act or I don't know something, but it's a it's the number that the Fed has decided is their favorite. And so, did you follow that today? And and not oh, really. I I'm so over the Fed to be honest with you. <laughs> and you know, I don't look at these day to day numbers, so I'm really a bad foil for that. So, go ahead and tell us. <laughs> okay. Well, the PCE came out today, and it met expectations, and it was much lower. And so it's indicating, gave an indication to the markets that inflation, more more indications that inflation is over, uh, that we're out of that woods. Um, and at the same time, uh, other reports were coming out today that suggested that the overall economy is doing way better than people thought it would at this point, and that maybe we're not going to have any kind of recession. So those are kind of broader subjects. Do you think inflation is over? And do you think that we're going to avoid a recession? I think that... Um... You know, inflation in the context of the last few years has been a product of um, the, the pandemic and the sort of bounce up and down uh, in response to the pandemic. And we see it here, we see it in Europe, we see it globally, actually. And I think it's going to be a while before the ripples finish and before we find some, you know, some level. We have a war in Europe, a massive war in Europe that has, is going to have a real impact. So yeah, I think in, I think inflation is over. I'd like to, I've seen the, um, the rate of growth of money supply plunge mm -hmm. very dramatically. And I think that always harbor, that always harbingers either a recession or a dramatic drop in inflation. I think the uh, Fed has gone too far. I don't look at the day to day, but I do look at the trends and the trends are not good. I think the Fed, um, you know, faces this massive balance sheet that it's got. It's going to have to do something about it. Um, but I, I don't think it's going to have much, much room to wiggle. And I think it's going to have to have this balance sheet for a long time to come. It's going to take, you know, s several years. So, yeah, I think we're going to see these ripples continue a little bit. Um, I think we've got a very, um, we've got a governor, we've got a, f a ch chairman of the board who is um, really unsure on his feet. He's really become hawk-like. And uh, I don't know. <laughs> That's not a good situation. But at the same time, uh, you know, the government has spent an enormous amount of money. So it's kind of, you know, fiscally offsetting the, the what, what the government, what, what the, uh, yeah. <laughs> what the, what the uh, executive branch and Congress are doing. So I think we're out of the, recession woods we've had a recession of sorts a really strange recession an unusual recession but we're probably out of that in sorts i don't see property prices creeping up yet but i think it's going to happen i think it's going to happen very shortly so that's just my thought 
Yeah. So um, I was saying this morning that one of the things I'm afraid that the Fed is, I, they, hopefully they're taking a look at this, but we have a, in, in the inflation rate is dropping like this. There's just a straight yeah. on drop. Yeah. And if you look at true inflation's numbers, which are more current, more, more immediate, yeah. it's showing that, that that drop is continuing at that same rate. Yeah. So the Fed could overshoot their number. Yeah. And I, I think it was only 24 months ago that the Fed was complaining that they couldn't get inflation up to 2%. <laughs> yeah, and, and the rate at which it's going to plunge is very dramatic because you only have to see the rate at which money supply has collapsed. Th that's kind of the harbinger. So yeah. true inflation is kind of the is the is is the result of that but the actual cause of it all is the collapse in the money supply in, in the in the supply of money and that's going to have a very very bad effect so hopefully we can offset it so time will tell all right so then that was the big news for the end of the week but the other thing that we tesla fans have been paying a lot of attention to is sunday and Sunday hasn't come yet, but when we when this is produced, it'll be Saturday morning. So you can't be wrong yet, Larry. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> so well, what do you think? What are the numbers going to look like? So Troy Teslik, um, who is you know the, in, the the community's kind of beacon, has given us a number of four eighty eight today, four forty eight. Excuse me, four forty eight thousand today. I take the over on that. I think we're going to be at 450, mm -hmm. uh, maybe a shade over 450. Um, I think Troy, had, you know, Troy starts extremely conservatively at the beginning yes. of the quarter, and then he kind of finally edges up as he sees, you know, the reality or, or as he sees the numbers begin to prove him. But I think the numbers have been much stronger at the quarter end. You know, I help on the, at the, um, at the test of distribution center here in the in the research triangle park of north carolina uh at the quarter end this is the first quarter end we've gone back to helping oh. by the way. yeah yeah since the pandemic and the crush was unbelievable i mean the lines were out of the door the the you know the and, you know, they talk about discounting at the end of the quarter. What people don't understand is there are a lot of demonstrators today because of the, the, the volume of demonstrations. So all of those are discounted. But we're going to see um, inventory drop like a stone. We're going to see a lot, a big, big quarter end, although they certainly have flattened out the quarter to a large degree. Uh, I mean... The, the there is a pickup at the end of the quarter but nothing like it used to be right, right. so so i think uh i think we're going to be hit the 450 number i think it's going to be slightly ahead of what the fact set guys are at and you know uh, finally the analysts have caught up to what we in the community have known all along in terms of volumes they always had these ridiculously low numbers by the way they have ridiculously low numbers for the out quarters and for next year but that's a side. So my number, short story, is 450 plus. And is, that, and is that production? Is that shipment? Do you think? No, no, that's deliveries. That's delivery. What do you think about production? Yeah, I don't. I I think we're at about 462 or 470 between 462 and 470 okay. in that in that ballpark. Okay. That's so you do expect, so you expect an inventory increase but not out of line with what you would normally have for the size company that we have now. Yeah. Yeah. A lot depends on, yeah. I, I expect a, a slight uptick in inventory, you know, with these levels of deliveries, I think to, to maintain this, this evenness of sales, they're going to have to pick their inventory up a little bit uh, of necessity. So even the, just the, the numbers of truck of trucks on the road or, or trains on the road, from the factories, you know, just that alone, because there are three fairly high volume factories now, uh, two very high volume factories, one, you know, uh, two, two ramping, two very high volume. So there's a lot of stuff on the road right. and getting to distributorships and so on. All right. So now we'll ask the harder question and maybe the more important one. So I've heard uh, all kinds of uh, folks that are Un, still under 20% in terms of margins for the second quarter. Mm. Um, I've heard as low from a guy that I kind of respect, uh, as low as 15%. Uh, so uh, 
I, I'm looking at all kinds of positive directions with regard to uh, price increases, more Model Ys, mm. uh, longer, longer time of ramp for the Model Ys in both factors. I mean, all kinds of, and lower commodity prices. Where do you come out on all this? Well, you know, I got it right last quarter. I don't know if you saw my numbers, but <laughs> it was very close. Um, I think we're going to do a tad better than we did last quarter. I think we're going to tick up by a couple of points, okay. um, uh, a couple of decimal points, not uh, uh, um, percentages, uh, oh. not a, a, a round number. But so I'm expecting, you know, just at the 20 mark. That, that's okay. what I'm thinking. All that's right, what... I'm I'm at around 21, so we're not far off. I'm I'm a, I'm putting a little more uh, of my emphasis on the fact that how many more Model Ys they're selling, yeah, yeah, having, yeah. having a pretty big impact. Yeah, it's possible. I I just think that it's um, yeah, it's possible. It's possible, and you know, um, it's <laughs> the, the 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 energy numbers uh, could well pop quite a bit. Um, I don't know if they pop enough to really offset, you know the relatively low uh, average price. So the average price may actually not go up by very much at all. Mm -hmm. um, so so that's, you know, a bit of a drag. Um, but I, I think they've been very tough on expenses. Again, I think that come in well on expenses side. I think energy is going to tick up quite significantly because I think there were some big deliveries, uh, some big yeah. contract closures this quarter. So... On balance, I think we're going to have, uh, you know, in that 90 cent earnings range, with a little bit of help from our friends, I think we get to 90 cents earnings for okay. the quarter, which I think will be a small surprise. Okay. All right. I'm over a dollar, but that's okay. Uh <laughs> wow. That's a reach. Whoa. Well, I'm, I'm probably putting in way more IRA money than you are. So the inventory, the inventory, yeah. the uh, Inflation Reduction Act, um, you know, uh, going to be at least a quarter million dollars, according to uh, Zach. But I think it might be more than that. I think it's going to show up in cost of goods sold, as opposed to yeah. actually going up as a separate line. But then that would mean that the the twenty could become twenty one, or the nineteen and a half could be twenty and a half. My twenty and a bit included some IRA money, at least quarter of a million. So I'm I'm skeptical of that. But we can, you know, yeah. there's not that much difference between That's right. us. That's right. Yeah, I, I think ninety. If we if we get better than ninety, I'll be very very happy. <laughs> and, and the stock, by the way, won't go down quite as much as it tends to go down in these quarter ends if that happens yes 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 so do you think the uh, stock goes up if we if we break 50 uh on sunday no i don't i don't think so typically uh, tesla goes down on the news i'd be very happy to see it go look you know i'm really bad on these very short-term movements yes. so i you know, if we hang around the current price levels and we get a happy surprise at the on the 20th or the 21st, whenever it happens to be, um, then we'll hold these prices. I I think everything turns on the date of the Cybertruck launch. You know, 1st of September is the objective. That's the target. <laughs> so if they hit their target on the Cybertruck launch, that's good for a good pop. Very, very good pop. You know, so okay. we'll see. Yeah, so uh, I'm at 460. Everybody in my channel knows that. And if we hit 460, if, even if we hit 455, 454, something well over 4, 450, I think I, I'm looking at it now more as a, a narrative stock where yeah. all of these things are just adding to the narrative as opposed to being a catalyst. It is a narrative. Yeah. It, it, is, it is fulfilling the narrative. It's showing execution on what people are expecting. And to that extent, I think it continues to, to push the stock up. Well, Larry, you also have apparently in your hip pocket there, you've got a something, I, I mean, I think I'm all over this stuff, but I have, to my knowledge, not heard anything about what you're gonna present. So you wanna share your screen and shock my audience? Yeah, so let me just say that I have been following 
uh, Tesla's warranty claims very closely for many years now because there was this whole FUD thing of, you know, that their that their, their warranty costs are out of the out of the ballpark. They're huge, they're gigantic, and Tesla's going to go bankrupt from all the service costs, you know, to service these warranties. And at so, the very least, and at the very least, they were being fraudulent. And oh yes, design. fraudulent, of course. Yes, yes. And and you know, I debunked that fraudulent some time ago. And it, <clears throat> you can find it in my tweets, and I'd be happy to talk back to that. But this kind of talks to it. So I've got six slides that I want to talk to, and most of the information that I'm going to show comes from um so this is warranty week. Warranty week is kind of the Bible for the whole warranty industry, and they cover every possible product that you can have out there that is under warranty and all the vendors. What we're looking at is um, their uh, analysis uh, over time, over five years uh, of the US OEMs. Later on, we'll go to the international, but just right now, Ford versus GM versus Tesla. And we're looking at from the last five years, from 2018 to 2023, and what we're looking at right now is the warranty claims rate as a percentage of product sales. In other words, how much warranty expenses did these OEMs incur for each dollar of sale? And so here you have, um, you see Ford and GM, they vary over, over period and you see this very big surge around the uh, pandemic. Uh -huh. it, and, and, and in GM's case, it was not only around the pandemic, but also the bolt. The bolt really hit, yes. hit you very badly. Yes. Um, and you see Ford also, you know, being hit by the pandemic, not as badly as GM because of the bolt. Um, and then you get this kind of wavy motion uh, that comes after the pandemic. With Tesla, we did get a small excursion um, around about the time of the pandemic. And by the way, we got a, an excursion with the um you can see my cursor right yes uh -huh. yeah you, you we got a small excursion we got an excursion with the advent of the three we got an excursion with the release of the y and then we got another excursion in 2020 around the pandemic that is to say the fall in sales versus the uh, increase in in um in in claims but other than that, with relatively small changes from year to year, Tesla has kind of bumped along around 1% of sales yeah. in warranty claims. Yeah, a quick, this, a quick, a quick, sure. anal a quick analysis. I'm thinking you're maybe at 1.2, 1.25 at the most. Yes, yes. And, and so that's about half the rate of a Ford mm -hmm. and almost a third of the rate of a GM. And so... That gives you an idea. And, and, you know, there's a really good reason for this. And it's very simple. The powertrain on an EV is dramatically simpler. Right. And, and, and sustains a lot less uh, vibration than an ICE uh, vehicle. Right. And so you would expect that to happen. And it did happen. And it does happen. And this is over a five-year period. So... You know, back in 2019 and, and 2018, um, when I actually started producing these numbers, uh, Tesla Q really, really, you know, they roasted me because they said, you don't understand, this is just the beginning and they're hiding the numbers and blah, blah, blah. And it's all going to come home to roost and it's going to be terrible for them. Well, here we are. It hasn't come home to roost. It hasn't been terrible. And, and you can see that, uh, Tesla has consistently increased its um, accruals, its dollar accruals, and we're going to get into the depth and we're going to de deal in detail with those accruals. But you'll see the others really are all over the show. You know, you see a huge excursion for GM. Those are the red ones uh, at, at the time of the Bolt. Yeah. You see uh, Ford relatively stable, mm -hmm. but you see... Um, Tesla increasing consistently year over year as sales increase, but not these huge excursions right. on very, you know, on, on very flat sales, sales that really are flat from year to year. Right. So okay. these are the actual accruals made. Does that right. make sense to you? Yes, it does. Uh -huh. 
And then um, the final one I'll take from the uh, US OEMs is the actual claims paid. So you expect with this kind of uh, general rise of, 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 uh, um, uh, yes. of actual reserves being made, you'll see expect a general rise in, ex in actual expenditures. And I'm going to get into those in much greater detail, but, but you get this sort of general rise. You see these excursions of expenses for GM. Ford is about, you know, it remains fairly steady. But this shows you the claims paid in billions or in thousands of millions um, for, for these OEMs. But let's take you to this next slide, which is, I mean, staggering. Now we're going to move from the um, US OEMs to global OEMs. Okay. And when we go to global OEMs, we get a shock. Why do we get a shock? <laughs> because this is the actual reserves that are built up as a percentage of actual claims for all the global OEMs. <laughs> and if you look at the numbers, you'll see that nobody has more reserves per, for, per compared to their claims as Tesla. Right of all the global OEMs. And you'll find that, you know, GM's there a little bit high, Toyota's pretty good, BOID's pretty good, but nobody compares to Tesla. Right. They're at the very top. And what does that mean? It means that Tesla um, have been much, much more careful, much more careful than all the other OEMs. And that makes sense because they're coming out with a new technology, they're a new company, they just don't know, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I'm sure they have pressure from the auditors who are worried as heck, you know, this is a whole new company, it's a whole new technology, we better put a lot away a lot of money. And of course, there were all these stories about the batteries and so on and so right. forth. Right. So here we are, you know, five years later, or 10 years later, actually, uh, really, um, and, and we've accumulated these massive reserves compared to what we're paying out. Nice, nice, very cool. And then if we look at the actual claims, you know, now we've, uh, the last slide we looked at how much we put aside. Now right. let's look at how we, we are in claims. Yeah. By the way, look at the champion in claims here. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> <GW. DW. laughs> there have the highest, that's a percentage of their sales? A percentage of their of their sales, the claims rate as a percentage of revenue. Now I'm sure Dieselgate had a little bit to do with that, and they've had a lot, they've had a few bad issues, and it's not good. Yeah, yeah. But if you look at, and this is Tata, that's the Indian manufacturer. Kia surprised me. I didn't expect to see Kia yeah. and Volvo all the yeah. way up there. Yeah. But Ford and GM, you know, are amongst the high ones. And then there's Mercedes. That makes sense because they're very expensive cars. <laughs> yeah, but look yeah. at Hyundai and B yeah. BMW and Stellantis, BAIC. But when you get down to Honda, you know, Nissan, Toyota, Tesla's right there. Yeah. So Tesla's in the pantheon of the greats. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, there's also a, a clear indication here. You look at who is in the bottom numbers, and they tend to be the Chinese BEV makers. So less yeah. parts, you know, et cetera, and probably lower claims because they're much less expensive cars. Well, that's a low claims percentage. Oh, percentage, know, that's right. Yeah. yeah, I'm a little, to be honest, you know, I've looked very carefully at BYD's accounting accounts. I'm a little suspicious about some of the accounting here. I. I, I would have to, I would have to just reserve my judgment because okay. these are all um, Chinese manufacturers. Um, so I, I would take Toyota's numbers as kind of the gold standard, hmm. and to say that we're right there with them, I think that's pretty good. No. Um, the accounting for these people are, is not that you know accessible. Let's say to to Western eyes. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> so, 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 you know, what does that mean from our point of view? Who cares? Yes, I'll yes. tell you why. I'll tell you why we care. It's this slide. This slide shows you the blue is how much money Tesla set aside. 
Uh huh. The orange is how much Tesla actually has to pay out every year. Yeah. The difference between the blue and the orange in green line billions of dollars is this green line. Look where it's going. Wow, it's already a, it's an S curve. It's an S curve. Yeah. And look at the look at the size of it. So when you look at Tesla's cash, yeah, of twenty billion or what twenty two billion, whatever the number is, just know that there's probably another couple of billion in the balance sheet, sitting there, waiting to be freed up. It's in a reserve. Yeah. Yeah. So you can you can so th so there's a couple of things that come out of that that I think of and tell me if I'm wrong here. Number one is, at some point you can take that money. So your auditors and everybody else say, you know what, we have a clear a clear idea now that we don't need this much reserve, and so we can now just transfer this to profits. Yeah. And so you have a one time, or you might have a charge uh, a a an amount over quarters as they reduce it, reduce it, reduce it. But in one way or the other, this comes back to the bottom line. Yeah, that's it comes back through the margin, through the margin. gross margin. So the operating, uh, the the uh, uh, manufacturing margin. Margins, right. So you could look at it as a one time as something, you know, or, or each month, each quarter, rather, there could be a note that says, you know, a billion dollars got put back in or whatever. I, but the yeah, I don't know. Oh, go ahead. I don't think it's going to happen like that. I think the way it happens is that the um, gross margin is going to tick up as they reduce the amount of money they set aside each year for each car. They're going to allow that gross margin to tick up. Okay. And so that and and slowly, you know, and I think I think when it happens is that over the next three years, it's going to start to happen as the um, warranty on those batteries fall, start falling away. I see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, rather than actually draw the money out uh, of the of the reserve, that it never works that way. What they do is they reduce the actual percentage they're setting aside, and that functionally reduces that cushion. So, so from what we're looking at, though, Look in hindsight, and again, yeah. as you point out, the big expense on warranty could be the battery if the batteries are not as good as we think. But every indication is the batteries are just fine. So, so truly, at some point, then the auditors could say, like almost immediately, they could say, "This is enough," and we can see that the trend is it's half of what we've been setting aside. So, if we've been if we've been charging, let's say, we're just going to use round numbers. If we've been charging ourselves two percent. We could easily get away with charging ourselves one percent, or maybe exactly one and a half and one and a quarter, or whatever. But whatever the number is, you could. So there's, we could. Kind Here of, are the actual numbers. I'm happy okay. to show you the actual. Oh, there numbers. you go. Okay, thank you. So, so here's the um, the the let's see per vehicle provision per vehicle. In 2018, they were providing 1.5 thousand, 1,573. Right. By 2022, we were down to, well, at one point we drip, dropped to 1,023, and then we went up back to 1,103. I think this is when the S and X weren't being sold, and now we're back to the S and X being sold. So we're reserving about $1,100 a vehicle, and we're mm -hmm. paying out $253 a vehicle. <laughs> okay. okay. So, if we, so, if we, so if we took it, it's and, and what percentage of that is of the gross uh, revenue. So that's, uh, so if it's a thousand dollars out of fifty thousand dollars, it's about two. Well, well, it's, yeah, 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 just un it's under 40. It's 40 now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we can look at two or two and a quarter. Like I said, a few minutes ago, I was kind of, I kind of yeah. right. Okay. Yeah. So we could literally then be in our head saying, you know what, if Tesla was at 19% last quarter, they were really at 20. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. 20 and a half. Or 20 and a half. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It's significant. So yeah. so significant. not only is this the not only is this this two billion, but also we're continually moving forward over providing. Yeah. So it's kind of a double whammy if you think about it, because really our margins, you know, about a, a percent or two percent higher than we think it is. And we've got this extra billion or two billion sitting in the bank. 
Right, right, right. Yes. <laughs> well, that is fascinating, Larry. I'm really glad you brought that to our attention. Um, you know, that, I mean, it's really significant. A, a percent or a percent yeah. and a quarter is big, is a big deal. I mean, we missed by a percent and a quarter last uh, quarter and, uh, uh, and we got slammed for that miss. And, so, and, and, the, and the lesson to us is this, that going forward, going forward, it's a more general lesson than just Tesla, but EV cars are just dramatically better for everybody, for the manufacturer and for the consumer, right. because the cost of warranty, therefore the cost of repair, therefore the cost of maintenance is lower. And right. it's lower than we think it is, than we yeah. have thought it was to be. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Well, that's really super interesting. Well, uh, as usual, folks, you know, having Larry on is always going to be something that brings us uh, elucidation, eluc uh, illumination. I, one of those words. <laughs> so, <laughs> Larry, you, it was great having you on my Saturday Thanks. show. I now uh, uh, will anticipate what you'll dig up by next Saturday. I don't know. We'll see what, <laughs> what you <laughs> So, so if you liked having Larry on, be sure to hit like, hit subscribe. Be sure to follow Larry on Twitter at Tesla Larry and uh, follow me too. follow me on Twitter and all those other places. And um, we'll uh, look for, I have, a, I have an idea that I'm going to have Larry on back in the middle of the week too. The idea just came to me for another uh, episode. So watch for him probably on Thursday. Uh, as we get into the 4th of July week. This is uh, Randy Kirk. It's been great talking to you. Thank you again, Larry, for being here. Thank you, Randy. Take care. Have a great weekend. Click the link below to get your paperback, Kindle, or audiobook now.